Hi, and welcome to Diaspora Fusion. On today's show, we are all about contemporary art and cuisine that ranges from Greece to Italy to right here in Kenya. My name is Evie Miner. Let's get this show started. So what's your name? Uh, my name's Hunter, I'm the seller manager and um, I have been yeah, here hosting some of the events of, for the Italian month. Give us a brief background about uh, wine and Italy. How, was, how did this month here in Nairobi start? What was the... So yeah, we just wanted to sort of showcase um, everything about Italy here in Kenya, um, whether it's food, wines, cheeses, um, way of life, aperitivo cocktails just to give people who haven't been exposed to it before the chance to come and sample and try lots of different, uh, different things basically that we had to offer. And I can see a, a really cool detail that you guys have added is the, the colors. Yeah, we do the, um, the flags for the, yeah, for the bottles, just to make it easier for people to, to see what's going on. Yeah, lots of Italian flags obviously at the moment. <laughs> and how has the month been like? It's been good, it's been really busy, really fun, um, different, we've learned a lot, I've learned a lot. Uh, tasted a lot of new things that I hadn't tried before. So for me and everyone, it's been really exciting. And um, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been great. So from your opinion, what is the one thing someone has to try from Italy? For me, it's, uh, it's definitely the wines. I think are very unique. Uh, obviously, we get wines from all over the world, but there's something special about Italian wines. And yeah, we've just been able to have this great chance to sample a lot of different ones throughout the whole month. So. Yeah, it's been really fun and uh, yeah, informative for me as well. So we have, yeah, we have all sorts of wines from all different countries. So yeah, we've got a huge selection, yeah. which is quite great. And um, yeah, basically we have lots of cheap wines, lots of very expensive wines. So we have a big range in grapes, prices. So everyone who comes in, we can usually pair them something with whatever they, whatever they request. Great. So you had uh, a Prosecco, yep. uh, Aperitivo. Yep. and uh, wine and cheese tasting. Let, let's start a bit with Prosecco. What is Prosecco? So Prosecco is uh, yeah, sparkling wine from Italy. Uh, really delicious, yeah, really nice and fresh. And yeah, we've been sampling lots of different uh, types from all the different suppliers here. So yeah, it's been, it's been great actually. At what point do you have uh, Prosecco, for example? Like let's say you're, you're about to begin your evening. Anytime, daytime, you know, people having for mimosas in the morning. That's what's great about Prosecco is it's very versatile. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely, um, and it's great for Kenya hot weather, so yeah. What is aperitivo? So aperitivo is basically a drink before a meal. So whether it's like light cocktails or something nice like that. So lots of different um, cocktails we've been trying on uh, the aperitivo week. Negroni, spritzes, Hugo's. Uh, yeah, really delicious, refreshing cocktails for a nice hot summer. Uh, sunny weather. You want to make a cocktail right now? I would love to. You come to the right place. Let's go. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> uh, what do you need in terms of ingredients? Okay, so we're going to make an aperitivo spritz. Okay. So a spritz. A spritz. A spritz. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. we use um, a little bit of aperitivo, which is like a sweet orange liqueur. Okay. Yeah. So we put a little bit of that into the bottom, mm -hmm. and then we're going to basically go half half with yeah. prosecco and soda water uh -huh. to the top. Okay. And then we're going to put a little orange ah. slice to ah. garnish it off at the end. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's for the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Ah, great. So it's a little bit, a um, little bit of a sweeter cocktail. Okay. It obviously has the bubbles as well, so really popular. Oh, nice. Um, popular here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pour. So we pour. Is there like a specific amount you're supposed to pour? Or? Um, so about 30 ml of uh, aperitivo. I see. Make sure you have lots of nice ice to keep it cold. Oh, cool. So you can't just pour the whole thing. Uh, no. Not the whole thing. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Then we want to cool. go halfway with soda water. Yeah. And that's the prosecco. This is the prosecco. Okay. And the Prosecco is, from what I remember, a sparkling wine. A sparkling wine, exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay. Specifically from Italy, of course. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Try not to take out the host. Yeah. <laughs> and you just top it up. Yeah. 
Wow, that so looks really good. That's quite nice, no? Yeah, it looks, the colour is really cool. And then you slice up the... Then we'll just put a little bit of a orange wedge in there just okay. to make it to complete the mission. Nice. Boom. All right, oh, give it a wow. try. Tell me what you think. Okay. <laughs> wow. Nice, no? Really good. Yeah, not bad. Really good. Not bad. Um, For guys who are just learning about this, is this something that Italian month, is it something that will be happening every... For sure, look, we've got all the products here in the cellar, so oh, yeah. people can come in and, uh, you know, there's always, um, we have an in-house sommelier here. I'm here to give advice about what, you, what cocktails you can make. Um, so, yeah, it's always kind of carry on. The product's always here. Mm -hmm. Lots of the delicious wines and things we've been showcasing. So, yeah, welcome to come and check what we have out. Wow. So, yeah, perfect for like lunchtime parties. Yes. And sort of, uh, like anybody, a, like anybody a, before dinner. Exactly. Like, yeah. like a nice Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I made about 500 of those last night, so <laughs> I know they work well. <laughs> That's good, that's good. So do you enjoy what you do? Do you enjoy your job? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I first started working here, my boss told me I had to sample everything <laughs> to make sure I knew what I was doing. So yeah, uh, yeah it hasn't been uh, definitely a good thing of worst jobs. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's been great, it's been really fun. So is there any experience so far that you've had and you are like, wow, that was a really good day? Uh, yeah, whenever we have these big events on the table and you know, the... Um, the feedback is really good from the wines and stuff like that. That's when you get really rewarded, and yeah, it's sort of yeah, it's just really fun meeting new people and yeah, exposing people to uh, yeah, the wine wine industry basically. Wow, great. wow, great! And also something else uh, for those wondering: this, the cheese can be paired with wine. It cheese goes can be really paired, yeah, cheese can be paired with all different lots of different wines. Um, so yeah, we can whenever anyone comes in, we give a bit of a description about what wines work well with what meals and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, we're welcome to come and try all Great. the little things we have. Fantastic. Well, there you have had it from Hunter at Cafe. Come on and check out some Italian wines. Today we are at Moven Peak Hotel showcasing an exhibition curated by Lisa Christopherson. The exhibition shows different artists who are found here in Nairobi talking about emotions and landscapes that are found in Africa. Well, let's go and explore more. Come with us. My name is Lisa Christopherson. I am an art curator. I've been dealing with arts and photography for many, many years. Uh, background being an interior designer actually. So how did you start to curate art? I guess I've always loved art, you know, just growing up, growing up and having it as a passion. Loving all things beautiful, elegant, stylish and things that speak emotions as well, which I think art portrays that subject. And through my work as an interior designer, art is a must, whether I'm decorating a conference room, or offices, or homes, apartments, embassies. I decorated the US Embassy here in Nairobi, for example. I've decorated Coca-Cola's head offices, Upper Hill, when they were there. And all of that entailed curating art, what works, what fits in, and what reflects the mood of the place at that particular time. Who can have a space that's just a naked wall, a blank canvas, so to speak? You would get depressed. Really? So. By having art on the walls, I mean, we just decorate, put some art into an office. Um, and the boardroom, there was absolutely nothing. There was nothing in the hallways. There was nothing in any offices. And I'm like, how could you work? What inspiration gets you if you don't look up at something? And like this painting of Costas that has all of the stuff, it inspires you. So art in offices in your workspace, because that's where your day is most active, is during your working hours. So you can have that mood and then to come home to something that is so beautiful that you really, really love. So I always say, when you buy an art piece, it's an investment, yes. Buy it because you love it. You are happy to look at it in the morning, in the night, in different lights. Meeting the people behind the art. Who 
are they? Who paints? Who does the photography? Their character, their charisma shines through their work. And that inspires me a lot. And it's about inspiring them to show their work in different places, uh, different opportunities. And uh, working with them is always a delight. And we develop a beautiful friendship, a relationship that also gives you flexibility. Um, the general manager of the Move and Pick Hotel, Michael Flint, asked me, well, do you, why don't you come to the Move and Pick Hotel and have an exhibition here, Lisa? We have this amazing space with good lighting. Come, so we've been here. I'm working with four artists, two painters and two photographers. Costa Juan, who's here with this beautiful piece that I'm standing next to. And then we've got um, one of my favorite female artists, Seba Wali Seer, also with her beautiful work. Photography by Risha Lella, who has won multiple awards. The other photographer artist that we have is Anthony Russell. So it's a beautiful show, a piece of um, exhibition and mainly showing the portraits of women in particular, I think. Women, the landscapes of Kenya, Nairobi, and everyday life. So it's really, they all complement each other in the most beautiful way. Here's another one, beautiful one of Costa Ojoa. Nice, that's really, Costa Ojoa. Really, yeah. So okay. mixed media on canvas. Charity. Charity, yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. charity. I love the brand strokes, they are so well defined. Beautiful. Yeah. And the colors are just, I mean, this is really a work of exactly. art. Exactly. So are there, is there differences of stuff that you put on the entryways, stuff you put maybe in the dining? Absolutely, but you know, you work with the client. Yeah. What, you know, sometimes we take several pieces and play what looks best because what looks good on a wall here might not necessarily look good on a wall in their home uh -huh. or their office. Yes. So it's very good to play, measure up as well. Uh -huh. Pieces wow. like this one of Sebawali's will go anywhere. Even bathrooms, mm -hmm. kitchens. Mm -hmm. I find people forget to decorate their kitchens. How many hours do they spend in the kitchen? The bathroom. First place they go in the morning, the last place they go at night. Yeah. Why not enjoy some beautiful art on your wall? Right? As you're brushing your teeth, you're just, it calms you, right? Yes. <laughs> Great. Seeing that you curated this exhibition, what, uh, what was the process of picking this, the particular art that is exhibited here? It was contacting the artist. So I knew that I wanted to have four, so diversity. So I selected the four, Sebawali, Costa, Rish, and Anthony, and I asked them to put together each between eight and 12 pieces. Um, we came and looked at the space first to see what would accommodate the walls, what would go onto easels, and that's how we came up with the pieces. And then when everything was here, I then decided what would go where. So which piece would hang where and which piece would hang next to each other. Wow, and what, what is the deciding factor without revealing any trade secrets? <laughs> or is it's just, you know, a design, you know, what complements, what looks good together, you know? And they don't always have to be in the same size. It's nice to mix things up. Great, and that's why you need an art curator or an interior designer to get that right for you. you. Do, to make it look really wow. Wow, great. Um, so any future stuff that you're looking forward to, any future exhibitions that are coming? This one is ongoing, right? Till this June. one is going uh, probably to June sometime. So this space is going to be a permanent space for Lisa Christofferson. So artists out there, they're welcome to contact me. So giving Kenyans the chance to showcase their work at different location, it's a blank canvas. Let's fill it up, let's use it. Kenyans abroad, how can they get to know about these exhibitions, like stuff that is going on in Kenya? Oh, or no, just but, but I think on Instagram, um, look, look us up on Instagram. And if you're, for example, showcasing here at Move and Pick, Move and Pick have really blasted it out on their social media as well. We ship worldwide. So it's very easy for us to remove this canvas off the frame, roll it up in a tube and ship it to wherever it is in the world. And even if there's a Kenyan, for example, in Kisumu, El Red, we can courier it straight to them. There is always a way. Where there's a will, there is an absolute way. We'll get it to you. Well, you've heard it right there from Lisa. When it comes to art, where there is a will, there is a way. We take a short break, don't go too far.
and today we are at Moven Peak Hotels a French brand right here in Kenya and one of the restaurants at Moven Peak Hotel Baluba restaurant is about to launch a new menu that is all about African cuisine continental cuisine East African cuisine and Kenyan cuisine come let's have this experience What is your name? My name is Michael. Uh -huh. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you do, where we are right now. So my name is Michael. Mm -hmm. A lot when I first got back to Kenya, to your lovely country, everybody insisted on calling me Mr. Flint. But that's my father. Oh. So now everybody calls me Michael. Okay. And I'm the GM of the Moven Pick. We are trying out a menu, the menu for Baluba. Right. Just tell us a little bit of a background about Baluba. What is Baluba all about? So Baluba is actually a West, um, West African uh, term. I believe it's a, a river or a tribe in, in West Africa. And it's just the way that uh, the concept was originated. So, as of tonight, what is in the stands? Because we have seen there's a bit of Italian, there's a bit of uh, Indian because of the naan and stuff. Uh, there's a bit of Kenya. Just walk us through the stands that are there tonight. In the menu, we have we have starters because most 95 percent it's what in our menu. It's an a la carte menu. But what we did, as I have said, we have done vision. Vision means we have an African, we have Italian. We have uh, Greece and we have German. So we, we have burgers from, from, Europe, from Europe and America. So it's a vision from all over the continents of the world because we are creating something like, because view we have Mediterranean, but in Baluba we have the vision of all culinary arts. It's a journey. A journey, I yeah. like that. That's why when you come from everywhere, from Nairobi, from Europe, you can have a meal in Baluba. Wow, so there's everything for everybody. There's everything from starter, main course, desserts. So you have everything from all over the world. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so tonight we are we are having a menu tasting. Yes. A baluba. Just tell us a little bit about the process of how today went and what went into preparing all the meals that we have today. Yes, we came up with a menu. 
it's a vision menu. It all from uh, Africa. As you know, the history of Baluba comes from Luba family. Luba family comes from Congo. And uh, Baluba has an history. That's where you can see we are using a lot of bolts, carving, so that we may have a vision. And we have dishes like, uh, like Greece, Swalaki. We have something like Mombasa prawns, where we have a vision of Mombasa prawns, mango and avocado, and whereby you need to test it. It came up with an history from Chef Aris, who is our chef, and came up with that vision so that people may enjoy it. As you can see, you can test and you came to see because Moven Peak we make moments and we came to make moments with a new Baluba menu. Yeah, so what are you looking forward to? What experience are you looking forward to give your guests? When they leave Baluba, what do you hope for them to feel? I would like them to feel the moment. Because if you are making moment for someone, it is something, something he has not expected. It's a moment. So we are making moments for Baluba people, for the people of Nairobi, and for the people of the world. You've heard from Chef colleagues right over there, Baluba at Movenpik is all about making moments for you. Well, it's a wrap from us here today. I hope you've had as much fun as I did on today's show. Let's do this again next week, same time, same channel. From myself and the entire Diaspora Fusion crew, it's goodbye.